Regular cancer monitoring may soon be possible thanks to a new affordable test method by scientists from NUS. That's right. It's called the heat-rich BS assay and its clinical samples are heated up to isolate cancer-specific signatures in a patient's blood. Now, the test offers a promising non-invasive alternative to tissue biopsies and it is at a fraction of the cost. It's around $50 at Singapore dollars from start to finish compared to other sequencing methods that can cost up to 1,000 Singapore dollars. So joining us tonight to shed light on how it all works is Assistant Professor Chow Liu Peng. Uh, he is the Principal Investigator at the NUS Institute for Health, Innovation and Technology, congratulations, Professor Chow, for Thank this uh, wonderful and remarkable. First of all, what is the, the genesis of the idea behind uh, this heat clinical samples uh, to isolate cancer-specific uh, cells? Um, it was actually an a accidental discovery. Um, so um, some researchers in our lab uh, was uh, giving us um, some sequencing results, and we read that, uh, and we saw that instead of this very uniform sequencing read, we see that all the reads are actually enriched at certain regions of the genome. Okay. And um, these regions are known as the promoter regions, and they are known to harbor a lot of these cancer-specific modifications. And so when we look back at the protocol to see why we are getting these results, these interesting results, uh, we saw that actually the researcher had actually heated the sample at high temperature. And so then it dawned on us that these promoter regions have a very special thermal properties in that they are very resistant to heat. So um, as, as engineers, right, we just wonder what can we do with these, these interesting properties of the DNA. Uh, and so we talked to some of our colleagues um, who are clinicians and they told us that whole genome sequencing is very expensive and uh, they are not so practical for routine clinical users. Mm -hmm. So together with them, uh, we joined force and we worked together to develop a low-cost, um, non-invasive blood test for cancer using this discovery. So, Professor Chow, I mean, it's a great uh, discovery that you made, a happy accident as well. Mm. But what challenges does uh, your cancer test actually tackle that perhaps the current tests uh, don't uh, address so well? Okay. So, um, a lot of the current tests actually look at uh, just a few genes, okay? Uh, but as we know, cancer is a very heterogeneous disease. Uh, if you look at just a few genes, you're bound to miss out on some patients who actually have cancer. And on the other spectrum, you have actually uh, whole genome sequencing, uh, which attempts to look at every gene, but is very, very expensive. And you can't go deep to look at the tiny fractions of cancer. So I think our test actually strike a balance between breath and death mm. uh, in the sense that uh, we are able to look at hundreds, of thousands, hundreds and thousands mm. of genes simultaneously, uh, but still maintain a low cost thanks to the ability of this heating to eliminate a vast majority of the uh, non-informative DNA sequences. So I think uh, a comprehensive yet low-cost uh, cancer detection uh, in a non-invasive manner is uh, what is not available in the market right now. So do you see a role for this, this mm -hmm. kit as part of the regular preventive healthcare checkups for cancer? You know, very much like how you know, uh, pap smear is, uh, simply because mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking that's your aim because you've made it affordable, you made it easy to use. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's a very interesting... Um, it, very interesting idea. Um, so, in fact, uh, when we develop this, uh, what we have applied it for is for cancer monitoring. Um, so, we are actually uh, using these tests to, to test uh, cancer patients who are undergoing treatment and we mm -hmm. track the tumour load in their blood okay. uh, to see if they are responding and finally whether uh, we can perform early detection of recurrence. Uh, but certainly, screening is an interesting idea. Uh, we know that our assay has very good sensitivity and specificity. Um, so, and it is affordable as well. So, and th I think there's a benefit that can uh, encourage more people to take up this uh, regular screening. Um, and w it is a simple blood draw. So, I, I think it is actually uh, very well fit into this uh, regular uh, annual checking. Mm. Of, uh, I mean, our viewers may be wondering what types of cancers mm. uh, can be screened mm -hmm. using this 
a particular test. And d does it have to be adapted in any way? I mean, could it test for all types of cancers? Yeah, so um, for, for this particular work, uh, we, we work on uh, colorectal cancer uh, in collaboration with some clinicians uh, at the National Cancer Centre. Uh, but if you look at the public databases of different cancers, such as uh, breast cancer, lung cancer, uh, we find that the enrichment of these cancer-specific modifications uh, at this heat-resistant DNA is actually universal across different cancers. So uh, we are quite confident that this particular concept can be applied to different cancers as well. Uh, and to adapt this to other cancers, you do not actually need to do anything, uh, do any modification to the workflow, but rather on the downstream analysis. Um, so for different cancers, you may look at a different set of genes that are covered within these tests uh, to detect whether you have this cancer or the other kind of cancer. Mm. Have you been able to scale it? When is it going to market? How soon uh, will it become available to, to, to us here? Uh, and what's next? <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so what's next? Uh, we are actually uh, working with uh, other clinicians to try to uh, adapt this for other cancers, mm. um, just uh, try to see if it can be applied to other cancers. Uh, we actually got some interest from companies yeah. uh, who are interested to take this technology and offer it to patients. Uh, and hopefully it will come out in uh, one to two years' time. One to two years. All right. Well, you know, we really appreciate you coming in and, and giving us a, a heads up on, on what's down the, the road. I was speaking there with uh, Assistant Professor Chiao Li Feng, Principal Investigator at the NUS Institute for Health, Innovation and Technology.